<clears throat> What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a tournament on PHCGO today, and I'm going to try one out with... Uh, I don't know. Let's play Ultra Necrozma wherever it is. All right. I would love to play with Ultra Necrozma. Yup. So let's try the tournament thing. We got three players in here right now. Hopefully we can get a few more here shortly and we'll see how this tournament goes. All right. So that wait was a little bit longer than I had for the last one, but with some video magic, we're going to make it instant just like that. Ultra Necrozma, fun deck. I think that I really like it, especially heading into next format. Uh, like Parallel City, as I've said, I think Parallel City is just a terror for a deck like this to deal with. But I mean, really, as far as just having a big one-hit KO Pokemon, I mean, this is ideal. It's very easy to power up, very easy to hit big numbers with this guy. And I feel like the format is not so much like a non-EX, non-GX format. It is very much just like kind of a slugfest between big, big Pokemon GX, in which case, you know, a deck like Ultra Necrozma, a Pokemon like Ultra Necrozma is going to thrive in a format like that for sure. I mean, dealing with smaller Pokemon, even sometimes you can get away with getting your GX attack off if there are a bunch of 60 hit point Pokemon on your opponent's side. Looks like we are playing against... Ooh, something special over here. We've got a Peaky Peck and a Tauros. All right, so feeling pretty good about that. I think I uh, definitely got some decent odds. Moving on to the next round with my Ultra Necrozma deck here. I think we're just going to go for a quick Dawn Wings, though. That kind of feels like the best here. All these Pokemon are going to have, like, less than 100 hit points, so or uh, less than 120 hit points. So we're just going to go in and see if we can set up as quickly as possible. See if my Bridget's in the deck. My Bridget is in the deck, so we can get our second Lele here. And just go turn one, Lele. We're going to grab Bridget. We're going to set up ourselves a couple of Inkes in the Dawn Wings. And I do love that about this deck, that you can just be selective with what kind of strategy you want to take up. So if I want to do quick, efficient damage, I can go with the Dawn Wings Necrozma here. If I want to, you know, knock out huge threats, I can go for yeah we're just going to yeah we'll probably well, let's just play that as well uh and we'll pass to my opponent if you want to knock out big threats you can go for the ultra necrozma having that you know kind of flexibility is part of what just makes a deck or an archetype very very strong here now i didn't even know the town map was a legal card i guess it is in breakthrough though looks like my opponent is playing some sort of variation of like a theme deck or something like that now i'm pretty sure yeah yeah i didn't pick the theme deck there is a theme deck Oh, there's a Dark Rye EX in here. That's insane. Uh, there is a theme deck version of these tournaments that you can play. I know Natalie loves to play the theme decks on her account. Uh, which theme deck did you say was the best, Natalie? The hidden. She loves the Hidden Moon theme deck. That's her favorite one for sure. I'm going to Mysterious Treasure away. I don't think that I will need these metal energies, honestly. I would rather just have as many supporters in my deck as I can. So we're just going to go in and try to attack with Dark Flash this turn. Just get up and rolling. Don't really want to end my opponent because they weren't really drawing anything. And then we'll just Ultra Ball away. Probably a Sycamore and the Floatstone. I don't think that I'll need these for now. Get my second Malamar, and we've got ourselves a turn to attack. Since I was able to Ultra Ball away those two energies on the first turn of the game, we're going to double Psychic Recharge, and then my opponent's poor Tauros is going down. So that uh, probably going to be a quick conclusion to game one here in the tournament. See what we're going to end up playing against next round, and if we can win this thing and crack some packs at the end would be pretty dope. All right, so we got in invasion here turn two dark flash that is super powerful so excellent stuff there oh no sorry tauros you've got to go got to go my guy my opponent's going to promote their peaky peck and uh i'm not sure that peaky peck has got what it takes to stand up to this uh this dawn wings here i think and that's the uh, probably going to be a no-go so going to be a quick finish here on the next one my opponent's got skyla though so can they pull something out with Skyla? I saw that Darkrai, so I know that they've got a Darkrai. 
Then they are going to go grab a Tierno. They want to draw more cards. That's uh, that's a good idea. Ooh, here comes Snorlax. Any damage done to this Pokemon is reduced by 30. Some of these guys might be a little bit more difficult for me to knock out, so that's fine. I'm just going to put the uh, yep, yeah, put that Ultra Necrozma down there then, and see if I could start pumping some energy onto this guy just in case I encounter anything that I can't immediately knock out, like that Darkrai there. So we're just mowing on through. I know that my opponent has that Tierno for next turn, but like honestly, at this point we are just kind of delaying the inevitable, unfortunately. And this is kind of like, I guess this is like what you get in a tournament setting, because you never know. Like I haven't played against a deck like this on PTCGO since like three years ago you know because they have their uh their matchups you know done in a way that you don't need to face off against let's see i'm just going to guzma i think and take a knockout on that rattata um i don't know i could take a knockout on the rattata but then i'm avoiding this snorlax i feel like I want to, and I'd have to like blow up the Snorlax or just two shot the Snorlax. I don't really care. This is fine. Let's just Cynthia. We're going to draw more cards. Just attach the Psychic there to the bench guy. We'll just two shot the Snorlax if we have to two shot the Snorlax. Not super concerned about it. We're just going to start Mysterious Treasuring things away though to kind of like thin our deck, give us a few more options. That's all good. But yeah, like I was saying, I have not played against a deck like this on PTCGO since, you know, Oh, I forgot I have the Beast Energy. I'm knocking the Snorlax out. I don't really know what I was thinking there. Decreases damage done by 30, but I got plus 30 with the Beast Energy, so we're good to go. But when you roll into a tournament, I guess just like anybody with some tickets can roll up into the tournament, you know, irregardless of what their kind of internal win rate is. I think the matchmaking on PTCGO does pair you by what your win rate is something like that because and there has to be some sort of system to it i don't really know how it works honestly because i haven't really Ooh, that discards my does that crunch that discards my yeah so they get rid of my beast rank my beast energy oh no give me my beast energy back all right i want to get myself a i want to get myself a metal energy or a you know yeah, a metal energy. There we go. We've got the professor letter here. So now we can go in, get that metal energy, throw it onto this ultra necrozma here. Uh, eventually, not this turn. I forgot that I had already attached. So we're going to mysterious treasure one more time. I just want to thin my deck as much as possible here, just because that's just what you do when you're in this kind of situation. We're going to dark flash again. Now my opponent has to promote that dark rye, which I am ready for arcane mage 2001. I'm ready for the dark rye. Just going to blow it up with the ultra necrozma here and be on to my next pat, uh, next game. And one step closer to uh, opening some packs, so that'd be pretty sweet. All right, here we go. Goodbye, Darkrai, and good game to my opponent. Sweet stuff. Uh, on to the next one, and we'll see how game two goes in this eight-person tournament here. Uh, hopefully, we can get a dub and move on and crack some packs. That'd be pretty sweet. All right, yeah, so our first one ended pretty quick there. So a little bit of a wait, but snapping on to the next one. Looks like we are playing against a Fighting and Psychic deck, hoping that we get a little bit of a better matchup here and hopefully a little bit more of an exciting game to watch. I'm going to be going first. That's great for any Malamar deck. Loves going first. We're going to start our friendly guy, Mewtwo, especially since it looks like they were playing against a fighting deck. Having Mewtwo's pressure out there in the active position is fantastic. Since I am going first, there's no real reason to bench my other Pokemon. I've always thought that that was kind of uh, a funny thing. I mean, technically, you would you know just kind of wait and see whatever my opponent's playing before I bench anything because there's no way for my opponent to disrupt my hand for my hand start before my uh, you know my game starts here. So I think uh, we don't actually need the uh, Ultra Necrozma here, though I hate. Um, you know, and they're playing Buzzwool, and I could go in and get the, you know, maybe knock out a uh, Lycan Rock or something like that later in the game. I think I just want to go in with Mewtwo's, though. The thing is, just playing Cynthia here feels so bad. I would love to get an energy in the discard pile, but I feel like we just have to play 
Cynthia, unfortunately. I'll put a choice band here since I don't think it really matters. We're just going to slap an energy on the active and then just play that Cynthia. Having Mewtwo in the active is very good, uh, and this is actually not a bad hand to have gotten here off the draw. I don't mind this at all. I can go get myself a Lele for next turn, so that is very good. I feel like a third, probably a third Inke would be the best case scenario here. So I could Ultra Ball away a Bridget and a Psychic Energy. I'm also getting an energy in the discard pile if I do that, so I do like that. Reason I put the Choice Band on the Active Mewtwo, just to thin it out of my hand, just because with the turn one Cynthia, I always feel so sketchy, like I might draw nothing. So I'm gonna give myself like the most opportunities possible to draw as many live cards. I would hate to get that Choice Band back, right? It's just a worthless card. So uh, worthless card for the starting the game there. Uh, I think I will Ultra Ball away my Bridget and my energy there and let's just go get ourselves a third ink and then next turn we're going to mysterious treasure so long as my opponent doesn't like uh do something like delinquent my hand away which would be nuts uh or parallel city me i mean most buzzwall decks are not playing parallel city right now so like i guess that's a little bit of like a higher kind of risk play uh, I guess I mean, i'm not playing around the parallel city but i don't think that my opponent plays parallel city that's my guess I have seen very, you know, few and far between Buzzwool decks with Parallel City involved. My opponent is playing the Generations Fighting Energy. Very cool. And they go for, you see, they went for a Sycamore. They know they're playing against a Malamar deck. They know they need to set up as quickly as possible. Oh, are they playing Buzz Garb? Okay. I guess they are playing Buzz Garb. Okay, so they're not playing Buzz Rock. They're playing Buzz Garb. That is good for me to know here. And, you know, they decided not to go for the turn one Cynthia, the turn one end. I think I disagree with that. I think in a Garbodor deck, you need more, uh, you need a, those supporters. Like, there's no way around it. You just are going to need those supporters later in the game. And you can't afford to just waste so many supporters like that. You can see my opponent didn't even get the turn one. Uh, oof, that kind of hurts. So, yeah, we're doing it. I mean, we're just going to mysterious treasure that guy away. And we got two left in deck, and I also got some Rescue Stretcher. I think I got a Rescue Stretcher, so we should be okay. But love how Buzz, uh, how this Mewtwo just decreased that damage done to my NK there on the bench. That is very good, very helpful. We're just going to go all in for a Sycamore here. Hopefully we can get, I mean, honestly, Dawn Wings, Floatstone, two Malamars. I mean, that's like the kind of ideal situation. And whoa, talk about ripping it. Gosh, this Buzzwool is a goner. That's insane. We could just go and get those and we just shredded right there. I mean, that is just a perfect draw. And I could just go to town with the Mewtwo. I don't really need to go in with Dawn Wings yet. And I actually like going in with Mewtwo instead because my opponent's ideal kind of come up play here is to just uh, like end me and then uh, your beast ring and then absorption, right? So I wanna like not have that be an option for them. So let's, uh, yeah, let's mysterious treasure away one of these guys here. And we're gonna go get ourselves a Lele just in case my opponent does something crazy and takes a knockout next turn. Then we can accelerate two energies. We're gonna float stone here invasion and my opponent has got to be unhappy about this they are getting just uh just ran through turn two mewtwo with the super cybolt the choice band actually making a difference there because i would only do 200 damage without the choice band because of the fighting fury belt i do have my field blower but i get to save that in case my opponent does eventually get a garbador into play and then we're just going to attach this basic energy here onto my bench and we've got super cybolt for knockout sweet stuff there and we should be pretty good even if my opponent does manage to do something crazy with like beast ring this turn i've got a lot of options at my disposal as far as just being able to power up this dawn wings very good i also have lele in my hand in case they get a knockout i can go for you know guzma i've got field blower i could you know go for n if i want to limit my opponent more or something like that but they're probably they're not taking a gx knockout this this turn i'd have to think that they're probably unless they literally have like you know b-string energy guzma which they could have uh, pretty easily and but that's not going to advance their board state at all they kind of need to end here uh, but they don't have a trubbish out 
It's just really rough for my opponent. Not getting the turn one Trubbish there was pretty much horrible. They do have Counter Catcher, though, so I see them there, and they're going to Cynthia. So maybe, I guess, ooh, that feels horrible. I mean, they're going to Counter Catcher this guy, but at, they're not going to Jet Punch, are they? I mean, they know I can Invasion and Retreat. They are just going to sack two more prizes if they do that. Like, they know that. So I think they're probably going to go up and Jet Punch. Yeah, with that one. That's just horrible, though. They know that I have Knockout on this Buzzwall. Like, there's no getting around it. They just know that. Uh, so I'm comfortable just attaching this guy here and just using Invasion. And we're going to... I mean, my opponent does get 60 damage onto that Malamar, but I don't think that they're going to get to, you know, I don't think that they're really going to get to knock out that Malamar. I don't think they'll get to Jet Punch at all. And now I've got two options in play to knock out a Buzzwall GX next turn. That's really rough. I think they needed to go for, honestly, they had to knock out that Mewtwo. I think they had to go for Baby Buzzwall last turn. And as an option for a Baby Buzzwall, they should have sledgehammered, and they should have sledgehammered this Mewtwo, knocked it out, and just hoped that I didn't have anything there. But now, I mean, if they attack with this Buzzwall, I just got game. I mean, they didn't even get ability lock, I don't... Yeah, they put the Fury Belt on the eye, just had game. They just, uh... Oof, you see how things, you know, the Buzzgarb deck, you got to play it. Uh, you can't, there's really no room for error on some of these plays because you're trying to, like, finesse a situation where you limit your opponent from options. I mean, they really just, you can't just go giving up Buzzwolves like that. I think my opponent definitely had to go in with the non-EX there and knock out the Mewtwo. Then I don't take a GX knockout that turn unless I have Guzma and Energy. So I think like they have to go in with the Baby Buzz, make me knock out the Baby Buzz wool, right, with a GX. Then they have another turn to set up Garbodor. They have another turn to hit their B-Strings because instead of going from four to two prizes, uh, they go from... Uh, or I go from four to three or something like that. They go from four to three. So they would have been at the three prize mark. That's like, that's where they want to be as a Buzzwell GX deck in that situation, especially since the baby Buzzwell could have taken that prize there on the Mewtwo. Sledgehammering for 120 would have easily gotten the knockout. Just uh, that's, that's a tough situation. I mean, honestly, also with the turn one Sycamore there, that was super rough ditching all those supporters either way we're gonna see how our last match in the tournament goes we're either playing against jakestermon or l barbass 94 we'll see how it goes queuing up for the final round here of this tournament looks like i'm playing against jakestermon here we're gonna see what kind of deck jakester has in the finals here looks interesting uh this has got to be a glycopod zorark deck i mean we saw grass lightning psychic dark type yep so glycopod zorark looks like i'm going first should be a pretty good matchup for me so long as my deck cooperates and sure enough here is a late late start with no in case in sight but that's fine i will be able to sycamore i think i'm going to go for a turn one sycamore here and not worry about cynthia i want to get some energy in the discard pile for sure. So I am going to just end up ditching that choice ban and all that. I mean, yes, that is a little bit aggressive, but honestly, I want to try and get as many of these energies in the discard pile as possible. I'm probably just going to get a third here and then leave three psychics in the deck. And then we're just going to let it ride here. I could have gotten two psychics, but I want to leave some in the deck so that I can, you know, in case I you know, don't get a turn one in K. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, so I actually was a little bit tilted in there and just threw down the Dawn Wings. I should not have done that, but uh, it's fine. We out here now. So I can maybe maneuver around and get a Mewtwo into the active. My opponent, like, parallels me. That's just horrible, horrible stuff. I think I want to get the Mewtwo active here. So we are just doing this. We're just going to Invasion and uh, retreat into the Mewtwo, and that's fine. This is kind of like where we're just going to live here for the moment. I don't like having the Dawn Wings down, but, you know, whatever. I accidentally threw that guy down. I went to throw the Ultra Necrozma down, but this is where we're at right now. Finals of our little tournament here. We had to play against a Tauros uh, at a Snorlax deck. Then we had to play against a Buzzgarb to get here. So on to the final match. What do we got? I think next turn, honestly, like I feel like I just have to go for Sycamore again. 
that was such a rough whiff and it's part of the you know one of the main concerns i have about this deck is that things can just be so rough if you miss your in case and we play so many outs to in case as well obviously that first hand is like pretty busted if i just don't start the lele if i start anything else like i'm pretty cool with that Oh, now we've got two Malamars. That feels really bad here, but ending my opponent feels bad as well. I mean, I can hit a Rescue Stretcher. I think I can... I think I might only be playing three Malamar in this list, though, so I feel like N is just what we have to do. I can't really just discard both of those. And sure enough, oh my gosh. Okay, this is horrible i can't i can't go you see why i wanted to play the sycamore there because sure enough here's two more malamars right and like i can't like uh i can't use those so that's really really tough i think my opponent's probably playing enhanced hammer as well so i can't really do that let's uh let's mysterious treasure away that floatstone i do have another lele i can go get but at that point like i will have filled my bench with so many things that are not named uh Inke, that I just don't think that I'll be able to win. But I mean, I think that we have to, right? I mean, we just we just have to. So I don't really think I could put this beast energy down, but we might as well. No, there's no point in trying. I think uh, maybe I try to hit like a beast ring next turn. Maybe I just like sacrifice the dawn wings, and then yeah, we're not we're not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna pass. Oh boy, man, talk about Brick Nation over here. We are really, really grinding things out. Uh, since we don't have any uh, Inke in play, it might actually be, you know, the best route for us to try and go down on prizes and hopefully hit a B-string. That just, like, might be all we have, unfortunately. But at this point, my opponent is just going to be able to take complete control of the match they were able to find their floatstone there they are getting off without a hitch and we are just in grind town we do have an end though that's fine honestly I'm not worried about it <laughs> let's just see a new hand okay all right we've got some ink here in this one we've got our beast energy back that's fine so long as like if my opponent doesn't knock out this mewtwo this turn which they pretty much can't then I'm fine. They traded away their enhanced hammer. That's like really good for me. The enhanced hammer is not very good in this matchup. It just is good for that, you know, obviously for the one thing there. So, you know, worst case scenario, my opponent knocks out both of these um, in, or knocks out one of these in case, right, which they probably will be able to do. So let's just attach that there. And then let's also get rid of I feel like we mysterious treasure away the, hmm, probably the N. No, I probably need that N, honestly, because if my opponent like goes up on prizes real quick, I want to limit them. So probably get a mysterious treasure away, just the ultra ball there real quick. Leave these as both options in my hand. And then we're going to slap the NK down, and we're going to pass again. We're just going to hope. No, I'm not going to pass. I'm going to end or something. Yeah, I'm going to shuffle draw. So we're just going to do that. Shuffle draw here. See some new cards. Sure. And then see what we can do here. Yep, that's pretty good. Now I can, you know, slap both those Malamars down next turn if I have to. I can Ultra Ball for a Lele if I have to. Just a tough situation. I kind of like hoping that they knock out my dawn wings there maybe getting rid of that floatstone that one turn probably not ideal but it's it's fine we have like one more floatstone left in deck we can make it happen i if i'm actually able to get my hands on that you know a metal energy i could take a guzma you know knockout with the ultra necrozma here i think we're kind of just hoping that they don't have guzma though like we're just hoping that they don't odds are that they will they have a huge hand here i mean a huge hand I don't really want this Mewtwo in play at all. I want them to take it out. Uh, just having the Mewtwo is kind of, uh, you know, kind of a tough... Oh, they got rid of both Enhanced Hammers, so that's very good. They're probably just ditching the Enhanced Hammers because they know that I'm not going to put Beast Energy down because uh, I know that they have Enhanced Hammers. So they're like, okay, I'm not going to keep this in my hand. I mean, Enhanced Hammer is bad against, like, the majority of the energy in my deck here. Uh, really tough against the majority of the energy in my deck. 
If I put it, do they have Guzma? Are they taken out? And all right, that's what I'm talking about. They didn't have the Guzma this turn. That's really good. So hopefully they don't hit a field blower as well. I would love to keep this as a very similar looking hand, guys. All right, and they don't. So this is actually pretty okay for me. I need to hit an energy. Uh, I need to hit a metal energy, like, and I need to hit one pretty bad. But all in all, this is like not the worst hand ever. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a supporter, so I kind of have to put this Lele down, which is not what I want to do at all. But you know, uh, it's fine, I, and I'm here. It's kind of it's kind of where we're at. I don't want to put my last float stone down either. I don't want my opponent to be able to take out like my options there. So let's uh, let's go get ourselves I mean sycamore gives me the highest chance of being able to hit one of these things if I sycamore I'm getting rid of all of these cards though that's not great um, I feel like I mean then I would have to hit like a rescue stretcher in order to uh, and I don't have rescue stretcher in deck yeah so we gotta just go for Cynthia and hope that we hit it that's just uh, that's just what we got to do. There's really no other way around it. So I'm going to go for Cynthia here. I think I am going to, as much as I really don't want to, I'm going to play some of these cards down here just to give me the best chance of being able to draw out of this situation. Mm, I'm going to save my float stone. This float stone is just like way too valuable. So we need to hit it. We just need to hit a metal. We got it. Okay, that's very good. So we do have two psychic recharges here. That's great. Uh, I think I'm going to put one here, and I don't actually need the second one, so I'm going to put the second one probably onto a Lele, honestly. You never know when Lele might be able to get in there for you and uh, kind of just do its thing. So we have plenty of energy in the discard pile. I feel like I do just put the second Psychic Recharge. We're going to throw that onto the Lele, and then we're doing 180, 210. Yep, okay. So I'm going to put an energy here. Also, having one energy on the Lele is just never a bad idea in case you do get, like, field blowered and then can just have a free retreater as well. It's really good. So let's retreat and blow this thing up. All right, so that's feeling pretty good. Now, Parallel City can be bad news for my deck here, especially if they, like can counter catch or something up parallel city me things can get tough pretty quick with that i you know it just can get bad if they like bring up a malamar and you know they bring up a malamar and parallel city me i'm removing both my leleys like that's a no-brainer if they bring up yeah i guess that's like you know i guess the worst case scenario would be if they brought up a lele to knock out which they can't do this turn and then paralleled me but they can't do all of that. Uh, I would also just be in a bad spot. You see, that I did get field blowered, so I'm glad I saved this float stone. I would be in a bad spot if they do knock out one of these Malamars, though. My bench has just been like jammed, packed uh, this whole time. I don't mind them knocking out the, this guy here at all. Like this is kind of like ideally I wanted them to do this, and so I don't even mind having the. I really. Having them bite on the Dawn Wings here is like great for me. I get to promote Lele as a free retreater, and then I'm just going to blow this thing up again. And then we're just going to see if we can do it again for game. I mean, that's just really all we got. I think we have one, no, both choice band, two choice band down. That's like not good because that means that I might have to hit some more energy here, but we can beast ring if we hit it. So beast ring would be very good. Now, I don't have an N in my hand, which is unfortunate fortunate for sure and my opponent doesn't have like a good way to knock me out and but they could easily knock out a malamar so i think i need to go get myself another ink unfortunately i can't just um or if i do cynthia and if i hit a beast ring then i'm like better off than having the ink in play so i probably do that let's psychic recharge twice I and mean, we're definitely doing that so let's just like think that through and then I think these are like two of my only energies left in deck. Like I'm pretty sure they are. So let's uh, let's just thin the deck a little bit. Let's Mysterious Treasure, probably the Ultra Ball here. Let's just take a look at what we got. We do have two Inke, two Malamar, one Beast Ring, and no one Psychic left in the deck. But if I could hit that Beast Ring, if I hit that Beast Ring, that is like really, really good this turn. 
So I think I am just going to bench. I feel like benching the. Uh, I feel like benching an Inke. Benching an Inke is like a little more safe. If they Guzma and knock out, they definitely have an option to do that. So I think I have to go get myself the Inke and just do that because I don't have. I could like miss an opportunity to win the game if they if I whiff the B string off the Cynthia, and then if you know if I bench the Ultra Necrozma, whiff the B string off the Cynthia then I could like lose just by uh, my opponent knocking out a Malamar and me not being able to get one fully powered up to take out a GX for game. So I think we're going to do that. And then I think I'm just going to Cynthia one more time. I mean, I could put a floatstone in play, but they have a huge hand. So I think I'm just going to try and save that for when I like need it. And then as you can see here, I kind of have like everything I need to finish this game off if they take a knockout next turn. I mean, ideally, and I did whiff the beast ring, so like that's that's cool. And then we're gonna photon geyser here, knock this guy out. My opponent doesn't have a good option to end me here. I mean, they are on an odd prize count. They don't have a great way to try and uh, to try and take out this ultra necrosma this turn. They really don't. So I think that they're probably their best play would be to counter catcher end. If they can like counter catcher up a Malamar, knock it out and end me this turn, that's like their best case scenario. And then I gotta just hope that I draw out of the end okay. Now I don't have, let's see, I don't have a, a Malamar in the discard pile or anything like that. So rescue stretcher isn't netting me a Malamar here. I am feeling pretty good about having the floatstone in my deck though and having the third Inke down, that's good. That makes me know that I can get multiple Psychic Recharge this next turn, which is going to help me win the game. If my opponent does whiff a knockout this turn, then I do have one more turn of Beast Ring, which could help as well just to get an energy. They do have the end, but they only have one Zorark in play, so they don't really have a lot of extra draw here. Uh, I have Guzma. Okay, so Guzma doesn't quite do it for me just with the Dawn Wings here. I think they're just gonna Armor Press. So crossing cut GX. Okay, so they're doing 150. And then they're getting this thing out of here. That's pretty good into their non-GX. I've got double Guzma. So what can we do for game here? I think we need to Guzma. They crossing cut. So they're like not knocking anything out this turn. I think I like Guzma up the um Lele. Yeah, I actually want to put, like, just stick somebody else out. No, I know this deck only plays, like, you know, the deck only plays, like, one floatstone. So I do know that. We're going to Psychic Recharge twice here to my Ultra Necrozma. And then we're going to say, you know what? You only got one Zorak in play. I bet you don't have it unless they, like, have Guzma in hand. If they don't, then I just have game next turn with my own Guzma. So we're going to see... Here, I uh, can't Sky Scorching Light or anything like that for a game. That's not happening. They only got one trade. If they miss Guzma, that's very good for me. But it looks like they're retreating. I don't know why they would commit the DCE before they trade. I think they, they should wait on that to see what they end up getting because maybe they end up wanting to, you know, riotous beating or something like that. Ooh, they've got the counter catcher. That's nuts. But they actually, if I could top deck an energy or a Malamar, I've got game because I could GX that Tapu Lele. Uh, but I need an energy or the Malamar. Uh, we just don't have it. Oh my gosh. So that is just tough, tough, tough. I don't think I can do it. I need, uh, I need just one more thing, unfortunately. So I think... I think we're out. I mean, what? I can energy drive something, I guess, but they just need to take one more prize. I could double, oof, goodness, I would have loved to have Moon's Eclipse GX there. I can, I could put something to sleep uh, with Hypnosis. It's like not the worst thing ever. Um, I could put their Zoroark to sleep, I guess. I can put, all right, all right, let's uh, Psychic Recharge. I don't have like a lot of options, but this is one option that I have. So I'm gonna get the Inke here, and then I think I'm gonna try 
and put this Lele to sleep. I don't really know if I have a, that or I could try to put this guy to sleep, but I think I'm closer to winning the game with this Don Wings here. So we have to just try and put the Lele to sleep and then hope that that Lele doesn't wake up. And then if it doesn't wake up and if they can't get it out of the active position, we can win next turn, I guess, with like a double psychic recharge and a GX. Like that's, that's really all we got. I, and I could have hit the, I could have hit this thing for like a hundred with Lele, but I think I like this slightly better. So we'll see if they wake up. They don't wake up. So now like, now I win if they don't have Guzma. So like that's, that was the situation. They do have Guzma. So like, you know, we were very close there. We almost got it. I uh, just, we needed one more card there off the top deck after what was an absolutely brutal start for us that game. I mean, that was just horrible, 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 horrible up and down. Just really bad. I don't think we got a turn one or a turn two Inke there. So can't complain. Shout out to Jake Stramon for winning that tournament. Cool stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what do you guys think of the tournament series videos in the comments below. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, check out the Etsy store and Patreon stuff in the description below. Thank you all for watching. Peace.